Welcome to Mama of Eight Mombersations. Um, we are on the Win Win Women Network, and we are so grateful for this platform and the behind the scenes friends who work for Win Win Women and make it all work smoothly so we women can gather to care, connect, and collaborate. Truly a win-win for all of us. I'm your hostess, Reagan Barnes. I am a mom of eight and, oh, here we go. Founder of mom of eight. Um, sorry, I had to check and make sure I was going to receive any messages that might be coming through. So, um, Mom of Eight is a nonprofit organization. We're new, and um, our aim is to empower you as a mom to elevate your mothering experience. We welcome you into the Mom of Eight community or mom unity, as we like to say. We are moms united in our passion to create a better world for our children, with our children, and through our children. We invite you to join us. Um, become a mom, a mom unity member. It's free on our website, which is www.mamabate.org. We know that every mom needs an EMT. E is for education, which is what this mom station is designed to deliver. M is for money, or at least monetary alternatives to relieve some of that financial stress. And T is for time. Who could use more time? So that's what Mama of Eight's programs are designed to do. Let's get you an EMT, education, money, and time, so you feel empowered to elevate your mothering experience. Um, when you join our mom unity there on our website, mamaofeight.org, we'll send you a free digital copy of our smile journal, where you can keep track of what you learn from each of these mom conversations and set goals and um, really make an impact on your personal achievement based on this educational program. Let's go ahead and get this conversation started. Um, here at Mom of Eight, we answer the question, what do moms do anyway? Now, this might seem a bit silly to ask, in fact, when we ask this question in our Facebook group, this response made us all snicker. She said, a better question, what do moms not do? We are definitely always busy as moms, but part of what we want to do here at Mom of Eight is really figure out what it is about motherhood that makes it worthwhile, makes it necessary. Um, we, we don't want for motherhood to get outgrown. So um, that's what we're saying is, is what's a, what do moms do and how can we define that and make it more um, tangible? Um, so we all know how motherhood has been critical to the perpetuation of the human species for um, ever. I love the symbolism in these photos, thanks to unsplash.com. But I just feel like this depicts the, how the reflection of ourselves in our children and the perpetuation of our DNA, as well as the partnership a mother has with her child there on the path of life, um, and how we are walking that path together, and both of us are progressing along that path with each other. So anyways, to further prove my point, even God himself 
came to earth through a mother. So we are critical, vital, crucial. Our role though has been denigrated. Motherhood is often portrayed as burdensome and annoying or full of frustration, something beneath the level of educated and enlightened women. Other activities are made to seem so much more fulfilling and more worthy of our time and talents than a crying, stinky, needy baby. Mama Bay is here to sound a cry of warning. Red alert, the world needs us, moms. But why, why? Back to that question, what do moms do anyway? What's so special about moms? Drum roll, please. The uplifting answer to this question is, Moms raise up society. That's right. Not just our own kids. All of society, including ourselves, benefits from and is uplifted by the work that mothers do. Yep, mom, your impact as you intentionally work with your children reaches far beyond your immediate sphere and it spirals upward into eternity. You, mom, you raise up society. Raise up is an acronym. We love wordplay here, mom, right? It's a word in which each letter represents another word so that ultimately it explodes with meaning. Let's give you a brief overview of each element of this acronym, and then we'll go into more depth. R. It is significant that the R comes first because motherhood is even like at the cellular level, it's just all about relationships, how we relate to our husbands, our children. It, it just affects every aspect of life. And there's other relationships, God, other mothers, uh, the grandparents of our children. Relationships require time and effort and know-how and practice. The A in Raise Up is for atmosphere. Our homes are a collection of sensations. And ideally, they're ones that we've conscientiously determined that we want and then put effort into creating. These efforts can be organized in terms of the five senses. We can organize our efforts by asking ourselves, what does my family see, hear, taste, smell? <laughs> smell, uh, sometimes not very pleasant. And touch inside my home. And then there's that intangible sixth sense also, the overall feel of our home. As we ponder the answers, we evaluate what needs to be adjusted so that our home is the haven our family needs for our mental and emotional well-being. I is for income and outgoal. These are two sides of the same coin. Financial stability achieved through firm foundational principles. It contributes to our family stability. It removes the stress of debt. Um, it gives us this sense of security for our provisions. Uh, sometimes mothers are involved in both the income and the outgo aspect. Sometimes the main way the mother influences the family's financial situation is through careful management of the outgo. As mothers, we can teach our children sound financial principles by setting up a family economy that allows children to learn important connections between work and money. It is essential that children gain that understanding about how our work influences our money. The, then our money savvy children will grow up to be responsible adults, ideally, who avoid debt and that related stress that it triggers to have that weight on your shoulders of being in debt. 
Now, the S is for schedules and systems. Children crave the security that schedules and systems provide. And the added bonus is that our sanity as mothers can be preserved as we make the effort to employ these tools uh, to manage our home and its inhabitants. Um, this can include daily routines like morning, wake up time, um, and then bedtime. At the other end of the day, it can include the chores, you know, using a chart maybe, or, um, you know, deciding whether or not to have allowance involved. The screen time is definitely part of what needs managing with schedules and systems. And then we have traditions. The, those are kind of the fun ones, right? But they do require conscientious effort to uphold and continue those traditions. Now, I really like this photo of the castle. I feel like systems and schedules are like the rock walls of the castle that create boundaries that offer safety and a feeling of strength. What we offer to our children when we set up these routines is a sense of self where they know what's coming next and how they can interact with the world around them in a way that, that leads to positive outcomes. Now, the E is for energy. Oh, moms, don't we need energy? Um, now, we all know that, you know, having good solid eating habits, um, choosing to exercise. And I think that running around after our kids counts as exercise. Um, and of course, good sleep habits. It will definitely contribute to helping us have the energy we need to get through our day. Although admittedly, motherhood can still be exhausting even when we have all those things in place. Now, the fun thing is, as we work to give ourselves more energy by having positive attitudes and actions in our eating, exercise, and sleep habits, we are modeling these efforts to our children. How about that? We can be models, super models. Um, our offspring really learn best from our example. And a bonus there is that Children who are well-fed and well-slept and who get lots of opportunities to run around are generally better behaved children. Um, on the surface, eating, exercise, and sleep habits appear to be elements of physical well-being, but there are deeper benefits. Those things affect our mental health, and therefore, that makes them even more worthy of our time and effort. Um, the U in our Raise Up acronym is for unique or unusual aspects of a mother's personal journey. Not every mom's experience fits neatly into the imagined mothering mold. A part of the issue, right? It's imaginary. <laughs> Mama V recognizes and respects that there simply are challenges included in a variety of circumstances, such as adoption, raising a child with autism, single mothering or stepmotherhood, and various other situations where special needs must be understood and accommodations need. Let's have compassion and help each other whether by finding others who are navigating similar situations or simply reaching out to support one another, managing those swerves and curves in, in motherhood is hard enough. Uh, but knowing that we have friends who will listen to us when we have a need to complain a little or mom playing, <laughs> um, that can be, uh, one of the ways to strengthen each other, even if we don't have answers and ways to solve those problems and issues, just being good friends and maybe taking dinner to a friend. I just heard about a cool website called Meal Train, like Choo Choo Train, 
um, and you can sign up a friend who's had a baby or surgery or something like that. And then that link can be distributed and, and various people can sign up to bring that friend dinner or contribute funds to help them cover the costs of dinner. So just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, okay, <laughs> here we are. That's the last letter of our raise up acronym P. And uh, it signifies personal pursuits. So it makes sense that this comes last. That is true to life. As moms, we get so busy taking care of other people's needs we often forget that we are people too with needs and goals and talents that we want and need to develop. We often purposefully push our passions to the back burner, but we cannot take them off the stove altogether. That would be detrimental to ourselves as well as our loved ones. We're setting an example for them and we cannot serve them living water from empty wells. So we have to intentionally carve out time and energy to sharpen and use our saws. That is a phrase from a book called uh, Seven Highly Effective Habits or Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and I just said moms are people too. So we can benefit from those that source of wisdom as we apply it to our mothering. Now, the power of this raise up acronym is that it intricately illustrates how moms raise up society regardless of culture. These, these things don't have those boundaries. These are ways that moms have over the centuries raised up society. It doesn't matter what your social position is. These are simply, again, the ways that moms are impacting and influencing the next generation. Um, so, but in the past, they raised up society. They, they handled their relationships and atmosphere and, and financial stability and schedules and systems and the sleep habits and exercise and eating habits and their unique circumstances and their personal pursuits. They, they did all that while they were in the midst of the mundane labor of taking laundry down to the river or keeping the hearth fire burn, burning. Can you look at that? So that is phenomenal to me that somebody knew how to put the wood in that stove and make it work. <laughs> um, there were no buttons to push about how hot you wanted the oven. You just had to know what kind of wood and how much. And, Okay, so modern day motherhood looks so very different. Uh, we, we don't involve ourselves in, in that kind of menial chores, right? And we rejoice about that. We love the freedoms that we have fought for over the last several decades. We are well-educated women with limitless opportunities. And that's a beautiful benefit of living in the present. Now, amidst all of these freedoms right at our fingertips, they're still our children. And they still need us to be committed to these enduring elements of the Raise Up acronym. They still need us to provide the models for relationships, to create an atmosphere conscientiously within our home that leads to emotional comfort and well-being. They need us to handle the finances wisely, whether we are in charge of the income or simply the outgo or both. Um, they need us to set up those schedules and systems and to be dedicated to the repetition required in those repetition, those schedules and systems and making them effective. And, uh, and they need us to model and provide good food and good exercise and good sleep. Um, and amidst the unique circumstances, um, um, they need to see how we handle those challenges because they'll have a set of their very own in their lives. 
and then with the personal pursuits. We want to help them follow their dreams. And again, they learn mostly by our example. So we are on a whole different playing field nowadays. Uh, the objective remains the same, right? We want to perpetuate the species, make sure our children make it to adulthood, not just surviving, but thriving. So we have to update the game's operations, align with the new boundaries and account for different instruments that are used in this novel sport. We have to innovate. And that's what next week's presentation will be about. So make a point to join us next week. And here we have ideas about how to upgrade motherhood, bring it into the future, uh, constructively evolve what motherhood looks like. And we want to hear your ideas too, how we can modernize motherhood. Now, mom, when you see this list, do you feel motivated? Are you excited to explore the various aspects of each of these elements and continue on your path of progression in these vast areas of motherhood? Or is it a little bit overwhelming, a little humbling to come to a realization of how multifaceted this mothering gig really is, especially if you're aware of your shortcomings, which we all are. That's like something built into the mothering mindset is bah, weakness, bah, limitation. So maybe you feel a little bit of both, a mixture of emotions and you're excited to see that motherhood is more than laundry and chauffeuring, but maybe it's also a little mind boggling and you're worried that this is just adding more to be done above and beyond the already time consuming laundry and chauffeuring. <laughs> Whichever set of emotions seems to describe where you are right now, please know that Mama Bay is sharing this information along with an invitation, a way to put it all into action without overwhelming you or adding too much to your to-do list. The funny thing about taking time to get educated and equipped with knowledge and skills is that ultimately it makes life easier and so it's worth the time. So smile gatherings. This is one of the free programs that our nonprofit offers a mom evader which is like an enthusiastic mother not necessarily a mom who knows everything but um, a mom evader she hosts a group of moms either online or in person with the whole purpose of giving you a smile, which happens to be another acronym. The S is for support. Moms need each other. We are social creatures. We greatly benefit from a community or mom unity rather, right? To ask questions, bounce ideas off of. Um, we can request help and collaborate together. When you join a mom unity and you attend smile gatherings, the lead mom, the mom evader, is trained by mom Bay in how to get you the support you need, uh, retaining your dignity, being uplifting, you know, building your, your thinking skills. Um, the M is for music. Music has been in a mother's repertoire since the invention of vocal cords. <laughs> music can soothe the sad child or simply help them relax and get to sleep. Songs can teach. If you ever need an idea for teaching a preschool child something, look up Daniel Tiger. So many um, things are taught in that audience. Um, like there's catchy short little ditties that just help a preschooler remember things, um, how to, you know, go potty at the right time even. Um, but managing their emotions is a big part of it. Music can relieve tension by adding humor to a situation. Don't we all need a little more humor in our lives? So right now, 
we're going to add a little humor through music. We are going to visit YouTube. There is a sketch comedy group called Studio C who created a song all about how songs make everything in life better. So I'm going to um, switch to sharing that other screen. And we will watch this fun little ditty. Okay. I am not sure that when I shared the screen that I um, made sure that it, it was optimized for uh, the sound. Hopefully it is. I don't even see that option on my sharing. So we'll just keep watching and hopefully that'll become, that'll be something you can hear as we go. A really great worker. Thanks, guy. Thanks. So this isn't easy to do, but we are downsizing. So we have to. Uh, just, so you're not actually. Uh, yeah. We we have to we have to let you. Um, what are you saying? I mean, we have to fire. You know what? Let me just sing this to you. No, I don't really think that would help. Oh no, it'll definitely help. This is gonna be really good. So. <laughs> Everything seems natural when you sing, when you sing, when you sing, when you sing. As long as it sounds pretty, you can sing. Evil things, nasty things, violent things. So, am I fired? You can tell your grandma it's time to put her in a home. Okay. Dump your boyfriend, say he's gonna die alone. That's a pretty song, now. Hey, James, hey. I'm dumping you. What? I mean, I'm dumping you. As long as you were singing, they can't trace that you just insulted them to their face. Like, take Jason here, for example. If I just say to him. All right, we are going to stop there and continue with the slideshow, but I encourage you to go and watch that again when you have time. Um, it's really fun. So. Um, I will start sharing my slides again this time, um, and we'll continue to tell you about the, the SMILE acronym. So the I is for inspiration, um, and the, this, of course, is like uplifting thoughts, but deliberately. <laughs> Maybe we share a great quote with each other or hear someone else's story of overcoming obstacles. Uh, maybe we consider on our own mothers and how they employed the elements of the Raise Up acronym. Um, the L is for laughter and the E is for education. Um, now, these elements of motherhood, each of these seven Raise Up elements has six components, which are like, branches of the topic. So for instance, relationships has the six components of the people that you have relationships as a mother. God, your husband, your children, the grandparents of your children, other mothers and your village that's helping you raise your children, such as their teachers, coaches, and pediatrician. There is also a set of overarching principles that guide you in your exploration of the subject. Um, and when you would come to your mom of eight smile gatherings, you would learn each of these principles. Um, and we are so glad that you came and joined us today here um, with our mom of eight mom conversation. Um, we hope that you'll join us again next week and where we will talk about how we are going to innovate in motherhood. Um, we have four of eight words and they are innovate, cultivate, elevate, and activate. So that, those are kind of the ways that we are structuring some of these conversations until we start to have guests join us. Um, we do already have some scheduled starting in January and we will be thrilled to have them and you. We're always glad to have you. And thanks again 
please join us again at that same mom time and same mom channel.